Abigail, if you aren't back and this is your first time on my channel, hi, welcome to Gabs with Abigail, where we talk about the Bates and Duggars and other D-list fundies. It wouldn't also be a Gab with Abigail if we weren't having microphone issues, so let's just go ahead. So in today's video, we are talking about a D-list fundie, Miss Jill Rodriguez, the most infamous of all of the ones that we talk about on this channel, because this week she decided to put the F you back in Fundy, and I really respect that. And so today we're going to have a response to her response to basically the Fundy snark community. And I honestly really do think, like not even being conceited, I feel like she saw my video or somebody told her about it or brought it up to her, the fact that she shaded the Bates and the Duggars and that this was partly a response to that and the fact that I all the time in my videos call her weird. and. That's because she used that language in that post. And when I heard that, when I read that. That's all I needed. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. So let's get into it. Hyperconservatism. Fundies. What does that mean exactly? It is a phrase flung around by folks that are trying to mask the conviction felt by righteous living. It is a phrase flung around by folks that are trying to mask the conviction felt by righteous living. I already, I'm gonna stop right there, okay? Because I wanna say that there is nothing about Joe Rodriguez's self-righteousness that makes me feel convicted, period. And this idea that it's trying to mask the righteousness, the conviction that we feel looking at the righteousness that she's living, it is because you are so self-righteous that we can't look away, that we have to hear from you all the time how you are living the best and greatest way possible in terms of what it takes to get to heaven and everybody else is not it. Like that Jill, we have you on camera, bro, saying that you can't tell the difference between what it is to be self-righteous and what it is to live righteously. And that you think that we are feeling guilty about, we feel convicted is crazy because I look at you and I feel pity for you, that you can't tell the difference between those things and how you get in your own way of spreading the message of Christianity, of the hope in Christ, the love in Christ, by doing this kind of ridiculous BS that is basically this post and many of your other incredibly self-righteous posts. My, the old, like, do you, I ever feel convicted by somebody else's righteousness? Yes. That I will give the example that my mother told me that she was going to a midnight prayer. And I was like, well, if you're feeling tired, why are you going to this prayer? And she was like, well, how do you think that you and your sister got your recent promotions? Um, it's from me attending all these prayers. And before anybody tries to get in my ass, she was, you know, saying it like in a kind-hearted, joking way. But that's how she relieves her worry and her tension about being worried about her kids and their future, is that she goes and she prays about it. She fasts about it. And nothing within that, like, and that makes me feel bad and makes me feel convicted that, like, I have, I make her worried or that I should also, I probably should be praying for myself and where I'm going, which I do. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I don't. But that's the kind of thing that makes me feel convicted. And just that my mother is such a righteous, she lives so righteously. And within that, does she, does she, she never makes me feel bad, but is always encouraging, always is encouraging me to have my own relationship with the Lord, to pursue him, to seek him. And that never involves her trying to say that she lives a better standard and a better lifestyle than other people. I would never, the post that Jill made about the Duggar kids, I would never accept my mother to say something like that. If my mother brings up somebody else's kids to me, it's to say something positive about them. It is never to tear them down, to tarnish them. Like that, that is a woman who I look to and feel convicted about. I wanna be a better Christian because I love the person that my mother is and I wanna be just like her like the amount of work that she that she puts into her faith but the idea that you would think that you Jill Rodriguez are the what makes us feel convicted about how righteously that you are living is weird it's a little weird honey and that's why you are a fundy 
because what a weird thing to think. We also must remember not to twist the scripture into fitting in to our lewd and ungodly lifestyles. We are called unto righteousness. Sadly though, we are cast aside and justify our sin as quote unquote liberty in Christ. Oh, how slyly the devil deceives us, how tricky he is to slowly pull us into his way of thinking and justify our sin just like he did as a serpent when he deceived Adam and Eve. We are so easily convinced just as they were and our sin quickly becomes quote unquote right and those who truly stand for right are deemed as fanatics, fundies, hyper-conservative, lunatics, or weird. Like I love this choice of using we even though she's not talking to herself, right? We is y'all. We is the other people that, that Jill is, is meaning to try and convict in their souls. Like, this is what she means where she talks about like, oh, the conviction, like a hit dog will holler. Well, no, it's just that I know that you aren't talking about yourself, babe. I, I could care less what this has to say about me. Like, but I know you're not talking about yourself. The truly is applying to yourself. And that you can't see that this kind of sentence is self-righteous is exactly like it's 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 weird to me the disconnect that you can't have the delusion of being able to say when he dis how tricky he is to slowly pull us into his way of thinking and justify our sin it was that are you trying to tell me that it wasn't a sin what you posted about the Duggars and the Bates what because you didn't put them up by name What about that was Christ-like? What about that wasn't self-righteous? How do we know the difference between self-righteousness and righteousness? Maybe there it was. How many times am I gonna say it? There are so many examples that you have of being self-righteous. That is a sin. That you, even as tr truly, that you need to big up yourself to talk down to others. How does that make, how does that make sense? How does that make you godly, holy, and Christ-like? I wanna know it. But Jesus I know wouldn't behave this way, Joe. If Jesus was like this, we would just make these posts about him, right? We would make these videos about complain, like complaining about Jesus and his behavior. But we don't. We talk about you and fundies, right? We are so easily convinced just as they were and our sin quickly becomes quote unquote right. And those who truly stand for right are deemed as fanatics, fundies, hyper-conservative, lunatics, or weird. What makes y'all fanatics, fundies, hyper-conservative, lunatics, or weird is the inability to see how arbitrary the things that you decide to hyper-focus on are, right? In a couple slides, she's going to give us, or a couple posts, whatever, this long list of all of these things that while might be in the Bible, your standard by how you define them is completely fucking arbitrary, you have to make it up. You have to choose it. You have to decide what is the standard. And then to put the language of calling that higher, of saying truly, as if this isn't just something that you yourself are choosing to do, and then shitting on people who, which then suggests that like it's a shit on people who don't do that, like that you can't see that, honey, is why you're weird, hyper conservative, a lunatic, whatever. But that is why you are weird because it's the delusion, it's the disconnect. Like the Bible doesn't say anything about courtship, nor does it condemn dating, the way fundies have made that a thing. Like the Bible doesn't say anything about that. But if we complain that, we think courtship is kind of dumb. We think courtship is kind of extra. It really isn't anything religious except that this is something culturally that fundies have decided to do. Like that is a distinct marker of what may kind of makes somebody a fundy is choosing to do that, right? How is that a conviction on righteousness? Somebody who decides to date does not all of a sudden become a sinner in a worse way than you just because you didn't, right? Or because your children waited to have their first kiss. Where is that in the Bible? that they needed to wait to have their first kiss? Where is that in the Bible that they are somehow less pure because they share a kiss with somebody? Somebody had to read the Bible, interpret that, and make that up for you to support that. And then for you to come back and tell us, oh, because you are truly this and truly that and higher standard this and higher standard that. 
that that somehow makes you better and that we should feel convicted. I feel bad for you that you can't tell that that is just your personal choice and you don't need to project that sense of superiority onto us, that we don't need to feel bad because we don't live that way. Like it barely means anything special that you live that way, except that it is an oddity. So we look at it, hun. Like we're holding hands before marriage or holding hands before you get engaged. Like there is nothing in the Bible except that you have decided to interpret it that way. And then to look down on people who say like that that's kind of weird that you guys do that, but whatever. That we think it's strange, this hyper form of purity because it's new. It's brand new. I don't, I don't, this isn't like, and we're about to get a quote in a couple of verses. Oh, we let's stick to the old traditional ways. That even just the idea of the fact that like, we're in the Bible talks about romantic love. Romantic love is, re is relatively new in terms of marriage. Yet that is pretty much what you're, what you and your husband have and pursue. That's why you got together. And that's why you're encouraging your kids relationships, right? But we have to hear from you. But yeah, we're we're all of us are haters for deciding to criticize your unnecessary higher standard. But the fact that you're trying to act like it is better than everybody else who doesn't, or that they're less of a Christian than you, as you're gonna suggest in a couple slides from now, is why it's ridiculous and it's weird, and that you can't see that it's weird. Because it is, yes, just kind of weird the disconnect of like this isn't what makes you a Christian. This is just something culturally within fun fundamentalism that you guys have decided is the best way to practice. And if that's how you wanna practice, go ahead and practice. But to act like people aren't Christians if they don't live and practice like you, they aren't as good as Christians as you, is ridiculous. Don't let this worry you though, for the Bible asks us to be peculiar. Titus 2 verse 14, who gave himself for us and he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Does that mean we try to be weird? No, but we do try to be holy. If that makes us not fit into this world, so be it. First Peter 1 verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. I often wonder why the world has no trouble being well worldly, but Christians seem to have trouble being well Christian. There, and like that's what I'm saying, there it is right there, right? That you, that only your definition, only the way you live gets to decide to be that that is Christian, that is Christ-like. Because what you're basically, this post is in a response to, if we're now bringing it back to, you're not just criticizing people who call you fundies, uh, that you're criticizing other Christians, like even just that in and of itself, where is your place for that? Who is Jill Rodriguez? Is she God? To try and tell people that how they worship, how they are Christians, is bad. Where? Wh why do you have a place for that? And and you're being incredibly judgmental for people because people don't worship or practice Christianity the same way as you. And why do they have to? Why does it matter? When they get to heaven, Jill Rodriguez is not going to get be at the gate, helping God pass judgment on that decision. We make every excuse to lean in a little bit more into the world, bit by bit, piece by piece, until we have no salty, savory righteousness left in our conduct. Again, I said it in before and I'll say it again. You're a little too salty. It's beyond the point of savory. It's, it's, it's not a good taste. We keep looking because it is interesting. What are we eating? No, part two. Ephesians 5 verse 8. For ye... Or sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. You may say that you are good, moral, kind, etc. But isn't the world most of that too? No, it isn't. We do not live in this good, moral, kind world. We don't. Objectively, we don't. We don't. How can that be possible when we live in cap we live under capitalism? How does that make sense that we live in this world that is good, moral, kind, and et cetera? Actually, the world is, is a lot of the things we criticize you for, Jill. It's very conservative. Um, it's very judgmental. It's very, I'm better than you, in my opinion, right? 
if the world was good, moral, and kind, would be would be we would be be having this debate about masks and vaccines. Jill herself, who is anti-mask mandate, but somehow the world is this this naturally good, moral, and kind place. Like I agree with you that it, I guess if you're suggesting that it's really not because it isn't. Like the fact that Jill thinks doesn't think that she is exactly. You are not anything that the world isn't offering already, right? You are not this place of comfort and peace and joy and inclusion. So to think that you are something different than the world is, is so funny to me. And that's what makes you weird. And I get that you can't see it because of all of the other things that go on within your religion all of it but that you can't see that these these types of posts this type of behavior is precisely what keeps people away from going to god how many testimonies could jill probably give us about times when she didn't have anything she didn't know how she was going to feed her kids that day and how god saw her through that but instead we have to get post after post after post after post about how she is such a better parent at raising godly kids how she is such a godly woman, how she has such better standards than everybody else, how she has, is so proud of her kids because they're following the same path that she did and accepting all of her beliefs exactly as she believes it. So honey, don't tell us, don't try and tell us and pretend like you are something that is so special and supernaturally different than what is going on out in this world. Because if there was, the floodgates would be fucking open into your church. Period, honey. And that's, that's like, and I want you to sit with that. You see, we are called to die for our flesh and embrace a path that leads to following Christ, not the world. I have cried tears as I watched good Christians who once sought after the heart of God on his standard of righteousness. And now they use their platform to deceive others into following the unrighteous path they now trod. And again, where I just kind of feel like this is talking about the Duggars, the Bates, and a little bit about the Plath children. And she could obviously be talking about other Christians that she'd be around, blah, blah, blah. But I just kind of feel like the, using the language of platform is very pointed because who has the biggest platform within this community? It ain't Jill Rodriguez. Next time at, if you want to, if you want to like, like, like say it with your chest, since you want to be bold enough, to be this critical. Go ahead and say it with your chest. Instead of telling us, oh, like hit dogs will holler. No, you're being shady. You obviously, and you said it, are saying these things with specific people in mind. So go ahead and tell us about them. Since you wanna get on here and say how they aren't as good anymore. They're, they're, they fell off, basically. <laughs> Ooh. You see, when we have been taught right from wrong and we choose to go back to sin, it is likened to a dog returning to his vomit. How dare you be saying this about like people like the Bates or the Duggars? Like just imagine, these are people who invited you to their big special events. Like days where you didn't have to worry about feeding all 13 of your children because they were going to do it. This is how you repay them is by saying like, oh, your kids turned out like shit, bro. Interesting how that works. Part three. The phrase liberty in Christ is grossly misused. God is a gentleman and allows us a free will, but that does not mean he is pleased with fleshly choices. And it does not mean that we have the liberty to use it as an occasion to our flesh. Galatians 5 verse 13. For brethren, so I, I don't like the KJV version of anything because why am I having to work this hard to read things? For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Which is interesting, which I want to say, like, I think this is such an interesting verse that, like, you could use to say, so then why the hell aren't you wearing your mask? simply because you have the fleshly desire to define what it is to be free and to have your own choice. Like, I think that's interesting. But we don't want to hear that. We don't. We can't describe that and deciding not to choose that as hyper-conservatism, but whatever. May I encourage each of you to examine your heart, me included. Where have we slipped? 
Where have we embraced sin where we once stood strong and called it what it was, sin? Like, I don't even want to continue reading because it's just like, girl, Miss Mamas, you, you, instead of you could have saved all of us our time by saying, sorry, I shouldn't have posted that post that I made about the Douglas and the Bates. Did she? Maybe she did. I don't follow her Facebook. Y'all let me know in the comments if she did. Because otherwise, honey, I don't know how much self-examination that you did, that you felt that it was appropriate and okay to say that. That's the difference between you and the funny snark community. They don't pretend to be perfect. They don't pretend to be holier than thou, right? And that is exactly and precisely how you come off. At least they walk in their truth when it comes to being online. At least they walk in that, that they know who they are. And me, myself, as a Christian, I'm, I would never say that I'm not a sinner. I, I could acknowledge my filth, right? But when are we going to get that from you, honey? And the day that we get that, when you stop the delusion that, that is the re that's not the reason why we are talking about you, that that is what, in fact, makes you weird, maybe we can move on somewhere. And if you want to examine your heart, me included, then like I said before, let's get some stories about you being humble. Give us humility. Like, examine in your heart. What about the post with Nari in the wheelchairs praying to get pregnant together and us making a comment about how inappropriate that is, is, self, is us being convicted by your righteousness? Again, why did you have to share that with us? Somebody who wants to be private. How does that make me feel convicted as a Christian? That was ridiculous behavior. That is you as Jill being annoying and kind of a narcissist. What about that made me feel convicted? Hmm? We need to love on another and help each other on the battlefield of life. We need to remember we are no better than anyone else. So we, I need you to remember that. I need you to remember that. I need you to remember that. I need you to remember that next time you make a post about asking, saying people are asking you to lower your high standards. That you are no better than anybody else. Right? So again, that just language and diction matters. We need to remember we are no better than anyone else. But we should not play the devil's advocate in confusing others around us to lower their standards. Sin loves company, and that is often why people bully or pick on other people. You just said you weren't better than us. No one is better than another, right? So again, this language of saying lower their standards, that sin loves company, simply if I'm now a sinner, if I don't live like you. Lower your standards. The response to this, the adult, mature, righteous response to this would have been, and, and, and a response to this, you know, saying that it's dumb to call me a fundy because I live this way, the response would have been, should have been, some Christians have different standards. And you shouldn't ask me to change my standards simply because you don't believe that that's the best way to, to serve Christ. That is what me and my faith believe. That is what me and my walk are convicted in ourselves and left it there. How is that not a message that we can't respect? But it's this idea of saying lower our standards. Oh, sin loves company. May I encourage each of you in love, embrace the old fashioned values. So Jill, what about your makeup is old fashioned? Stay salty. Remember God changes not and he still likes the following. Winning souls to Christ, which again, your behavior does not suggest that it would attract and win people to Christ because there are so many things that you do that do not seem loving and Christ-like. I'm sorry. A lot of like <laughs> biblical roles in the home, husband, wife, children, Modest apparel and women dressed like ladies and men like men. Again, this idea of what is what that means is culturally arbitrary. So that somehow that we have what dressing like a lady and dressing like a man is by as defined by Jill Rodriguez, as defined by whoever defined it for her in the first place. Because what about wearing pants? What about wearing a like pair of overalls or a beanie, whatever, what may have you, is somehow like you not dressing like a lady. If a man wears a kilt, is that not a piece of clothing that belongs to men? I mean, if a man wears a caftan, 
and he is in Saudi Arabia? Is he now not dressed like a man, right? Just even the idea, the thinking that these are the kinds of thoughts that are in funny minds and the nerve of them to go and do missionary work. And to basically say that people's cultures aren't okay. You know what I mean? Like, all of this is culturally arbitrary. How dare you? And that's what makes you guys weird. Conservative, God-honoring music. Embracing children as a gift from him. Like, even just that, right? What is? What do you mean by that? Because if somebody chose not to have any children, you would be upset by that. There are plenty of women who won't ever have children, who won't get married, who'll either, who won't be able to conceive, or just that they will be a part of the village that it takes to love child to grow a child a child. You know what I mean? Just this idea that just because you choose not to have children doesn't mean that you don't see them as a gift. Right? Like I, I don't understand that. And I know that there are obviously other Bible verses that encourage women to have children, but not every woman is going to. And not every woman has to. Like I it doesn't stop you from being a woman who loves children just because you don't personally have them yourself or don't personally desire to have them for yourself. Like that you have 13 children, Jill. Great, wonderful, fantastic. That you wanted to get pregnant again with Nari. Why? There's a child that needs to be adopted probably, but couldn't since you have 13 kids and don't make a lot of money. But still, you know what I mean? Like let's get into that kind of stuff. Let's talk about the work that you do at this pregnancy center. Let's talk about the families that you know that adopt children or the adoption process. Let's talk about foster homes. Like if we're trying to say that we see children as a gift, you as somebody who has benefited incredibly from the Biden administrative deciding to see children as a gift, yet have said nothing. I mean, if you were truly a Christian who purely sat on the word of God, right? And that is what dictated all of your decisions in your life, you would have had the discernment enough to speak on that. But that's not what we got from you. Standing on the preserved word of God, KJV 1611. Where is that in the Bible? He still likes the following. How do we know that? Who, when did God say that he likes, he, the only, he only likes the King James version of the Bible? I want to know it. When did he say that? Jill, please. I want to know what, what Bible verse that's in where God said that that's the Bible that he likes. I mean, Jesus didn't have the King James version of the Bible. None of the disciples, none of the people who wrote the Bible, right, would have been a King James version. So why do we have to use that white man's Bible? That's interesting to me. Marriage between one man and one woman, not use his name in vain, not live in fornication and adultery, avoid divorce, watch what we put before our eyes. And again, all of these things are so just like very superficial. And that list doesn't even scrape the surface of the holiness of God. Yeah, it doesn't. Because it your husband is very large, yet you never talk about gluttony and greed. I think that's interesting. Like, we never get verses to you, like, very rarely. I think we have, like, once. Condemning people who are rich and wealthy. Like, there are plenty of Bible verses that speak against that, but we never hear about that. And that's why people don't take you serious. That's why you are a fundy, this hyper-conservative cherry-picking that you do of the Bible, honey. You are no different. Like, that's, that's, that's my thing. You are no different. And you're weird for thinking that you're different. It is these little things that make you peculiar. It is your behaviors that make you, like, weird to us. But it is not necessarily because you are a Christian and that you live outside of the world. So I don't understand why we had to get this whole long-ass post from you. And that basically you should have said sorry and apologized for what you said about the dates and the duggers because it was inappropriate. That was not Christ-like. It was a petty, shady thing to say about other people who are your brothers and sisters in Christ and who at one time you did in fact have a lot of respect for and who were kind enough to extend invitations to you to their celebrations. So you're full of BS, pretty much. It's crazy to me that after writing all of this, the very next post is about how she took one of her signs to the NFL Hall of Fame and she had this to say as a caption, I'm not a big football fan, but the men in my life enjoy it. They don't idolize it, but they enjoy it. The, the quote unquote politically correct junk in the NFL has really disgusted me. So I want the scripture, the biblical verse, or I want the reflection after you examine your heart about this about how this was appropriate or Christ-like to basically say that because 
Native Americans do not want a football team that is a racial slur about them to have that name, that that is political correctness. Where in the Bible does it justify calling people out their name as okay, right? Like, I can't understand your this disconnect that you have. And exactly what I'm saying, like, you're weird. Like, it's weird to me that you don't understand that. That you could somehow call yourself a Christian, but not recognize how this sort of thing is inappropriate and is not Christ-like. You're really trying to tell me that Jesus Christ would support you guys wanting to continue to call a group of people out of their names. Like, if I went around, maybe that's how you feel about Fundy. That's like you're being called out your name. Maybe that's how you feel doesn't sound like it from this post, but if you, if I went around calling you and other Christians like a B-I-T-C-H all the time, like that's the only way I referred to you, you're trying to tell me that that wouldn't bother you? That you'd be okay with that? That you would say, oh, you know, I don't have to care about it. That's y'all being politically incorrect and that's okay. And that wouldn't bother you all the time. That's what, how you got referred to is out your name it's called bitch. Never referred to as your proper name. That you think that that's okay? What else about the political correctness? Oh, because some people wanted to take a knee? Like, it's interesting how liberty and your pursuit of freedom and what you want to do makes sense when it comes to wearing a fucking mask. But all of a sudden, when somebody wa doesn't want to stand for the flag, that's political correctness. Give me the Bible verse that, that supports that. And that's what I mean about you guys not be, being incredibly... You, there are times when you choose to be worldly, especially when it comes to politics, especially when it comes to American nationalism, where you are all of a sudden incredibly worldly. Either you live outside of it and you are above the petty politics of something like the NFL and the Black Lives Matter movement and you understand why people pursue racial justice or you don't, in which case shut up. Like even just... Yeah, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, Jill. Jill, Jill, Jill. That's, that's literally all I'm going to say is that you are, in fact, ridiculous. It, this isn't really to, to do with God. It's that all of this just seems so superficial and petty. And it doesn't seem Christ-like. And I don't see how you can't see that this isn't the kind of stuff that wins people to Christ. Period. Higher standards. You need to have a deep, hard look in the mirror at yourself and realize how self-righteous you are. Take a chill pill. Go to therapy. <laughs> like, you're very self-righteous, hun. And we're wishing for you to do better. We're wishing you to have some kind of self-awareness. Somebody left me a comment that was like, maybe Jill has a social like disorder where that we are unaware of and that's possible she could be on the spectrum and that's why she doesn't realize how she comes off to people i have never thought about that because i can only imagine having this kind of behavior this personality and your entire life you're told that christians are supposed to be different anyway so who cares if you're a little bit awkward who cares um if people don't you don't read social cues correctly like i can understand that I can understand that for sure, but I can understand that for sure. I can understand that for sure. But other than that, honey, get it together. You're a self-righteous little thing and we're tired of it. Sharice is tired of it. Like, let's get a rebrand for 2022 coming together, please. But that's all I'm gonna say. Um, thanks for having a little gap with me today. This is the last week I'm doing much of our just for a while, I promise, because I just, I just, I had to respond to that. And Jill, honey, if you see this and you decide you want to say something else back, I'm, I'm waiting. Don't block me. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's like you niggas gotta stop acting weird.